Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson. And today we're doing Ollie Ollerton. <clears throat> we did last time Foxy, Jason Carl Fox from SAS Who Dares Wins. Now we're on to Ollie, and then we've got three more to go. But the previous lessons before that were Alvis Dumbledore and Billy Eilish. And again, these two were a little bit longer. But before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick that bell to be notified when the new lessons keep on appearing. And I am doing loads while everyone is staying at home and working away merrily. And I just want to encourage you and help you to enjoy your drawing and just grow and develop your skills. So do like and subscribe. Thank you very, very much. But also, uh, when you do your work, just use the hashtag Drawing with Billy. That would be fantastic. I've seen people doing the Harry Potter stuff. Like I say, we have Richard Harris has Dumbledore. There is the younger Dumbledore. I will do the Michael Gambon one as well. And we will be doing He Who Must Not Be Named soon. And there are lots of other characters in the Harry Potter playlist. Again, link in the cards and in the descriptions for the Harry Potter playlist. And there's... Ooh, over 30 I think now like videos covering different aspects and different characters there's the badges Hogwarts all kinds of stuff anyway enjoy that Billy Eilish is on the how to draw general playlist and there's also one specifically for portraits as well but we did do Jason but this was a little bit quicker again you can see these have got the two centimeter grid this has got a much simpler grid but both are using shapes so again Check out How to Draw Anything, part one, using shapes. You can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house, or anything else. That's what I was saying in that video from, I think it's about five years ago now. It's been great to see to help people grow and develop their skills. Now, again, these ones were about three hours. This one was just over an hour and a half, about an hour 40. A bit looser, just much more of a quicker sketch. And again, just covering different aspects of drawing but showing you how using basic techniques you can grow and develop all of your skills. So anyway, let me just move these out of the way and we shall see the piece of paper that is ready for Ollie Ollerton. Now, here we have Ollie's portrait and we are going to use the shape. So again, we've got this grid. This is the center line. Again, check out the banner. The actual markings that you need are on there. This is an A4 piece of paper. I'm using Dale Arrowney smooth cartridge paper. It's just something that I love using. And I've got my trusty 2B pencil. Uh, I've got uh, found another smaller one that's in the holder. Remember, these are just brilliant because they will allow you to carry on using your pencil until it gets to the very small end. Now, A4 paper is 210 millimeters across, 297 down the side. And now I've split it. Now I've put this cross line in the center. These just help you, they're just visual. I've put this grid on so that you can just about see it. You don't have to put your grid on or construction lines as dark as I do because it's easier to erase them afterwards. And But I put these on so you can actually see and it'll, it will help you. Again, the banner, has the dimensions in. This center line is 105 millimeters. And again, I've got a center line across, but then each of those four squares are divided into four more squares. Again, just halfway, 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 halfway. Everything's in that banner. There is also a video, check in the link in the cards and descriptions, where it will show you about putting not only this one down in real time, but I also do the two centimeter grid for the much more detailed ones. Again, it's just about helping you to grow and enjoy your drawing and develop your drawing skills. So do check out that video, uh, the how to draw anything part one and how to put the grids down. If you're not sure, there's a full video in real time showing you what to do. But we're now going to get on drawing Ollie. Trusty 2B pencil in the pencil extender, which means you get a little bit more life. And we're going to start with shapes. So now, again, I've got just, excuse me, there we go, get that bit of dirt off there. We are just going to start by putting some marks in. So we've got the very top of his head down there, up, down there, up there at the top. 
and we're just going to bring a line down just a big curve just putting a shape in now we've got his ear now his ear if I just draw a rectangle and the rectangle will be where that ear is and again I'm just going to curve it down so you can see the shape but I've just drawn a rectangle first now over here we've got Ollie's nose and that's kind of by this point here on the center line and we just want to draw a triangle so I'm drawing a triangle there and that's going to be Ollie's nose again we've got I'm just putting a little rectangle underneath now here we want a triangle which is going to be his top lip and his moustache a little rectangle which is going to be his bottom lip and then coming down to his jaw now here we've got a triangle that makes that lighter part going up on his jawline where his bristles kind of come around and it goes very dark underneath now from his ear here again I've got another triangle for that shape then just fill that little line in for the curve coming underneath his jaw now his left eye I am going to just put in a rectangle and so we've got a rectangle there and I'm going to put a little circle for the eye and convert that into a triangle now we've got a rectangle for the dark part there of his eyebrow and then his eyebrow as it curves around another rectangle there just doing a couple of lines up now his right eye is right on this cross point in the center so I'm bringing down across and little rectangle there and then his cheek off the back now we've got a rectangle here his jaw's kind of going up and that's his right eyebrow and then we want his right eye, his right eyebrow has got to come a bit further over so we can extend that and that's going to be where his eye goes and then we'll build in the shadows underneath in a bit so again I'm just going to draw a little box for where his nose joins the side of his cheek got that line and now we want to put the lips in and just slightly there's a bit of a triangle there another triangle there now on his hair at the top here we've got you can see you've got that horizontal line as his hair curves over and then it just kind of curves up and we've got a full you've got a triangle there of shadow coming across and that goes underneath so there's a little rectangle and then here we've got another rectangle of his hair that it comes over and I'm now just going to curve his head top of his head his hair coming right over at the top and then you've got that kind of sprig of hair at the back coming off from the crown at the rear and 
and we want here in his inside his ear here inside Ollie's ear we've got a simple D you've got like a capital D there that's nice and simple and another one inside and that's a kind of darker shadow and then triangle for that little shape at the top now we want his hair coming down so we've got kind of a little rectangle here and then if you imagine that going right the way up and then we've got a little triangle there coming down and that makes that shape on the top of his hair there where it comes up from what the little sideburn that comes up and then goes up to his parting I'm just going to indicate some lines for the way all his hair goes just quickly now at the back coming off his ear we've got a little triangle there with a flat bit at the bottom now here we've got you can see a great triangle you've got a crease in his neck so that curves down goes over and then goes up so again you've got another triangle there now his jacket at the back his collar of his jacket so that's going to go right the way off and we've got a rectangle coming down all the way and then coming off where his chin is we've got another little triangle and then his right shoulder comes away and comes down and then you've got another rectangle there which is the kind of pressed or kind of connector from around the collar and then just to indicate some of the creases in his jacket and his arm and his shoulder coming round now here we've got his cheek now I'm going to draw this quite lightly because it's shadow area it's very chiseled cheeks so we've got there a lovely triangle pocket of shadow that's going to be and then his nose there bag under his left eye just that curve and then here we've got a V shape of again of shadow and we can just there we can see there's going to be a shadow line going up shape forming that rectangle going up to the top of his head so there quite quickly we've actually put in a lot of shapes that are the basic underlying foundation of our drawing of Ollie Ollerton so now there you've got that drawing we're now going to go in I'm just going to sharpen my pencil that's my wonderful electric pencil sharpener and we're going to slightly well not slightly we are going to detail up and put a, a decent outline in for Ollie now we're going to start with this eye now we put that circle in now the top of his eye is pretty flat so I'm drawing that over and we, we've got this curve this little triangle that we put in first you got the corner of his eye the top of his eyelid goes to about there you've got a crease coming out underneath and then you want this curve just coming down round and then it kicks back up to about there and then we've got the 
the center of his eyeball, his iris and his pupil. And there's a tiny little highlight there. So I'm just doing a little circle and I'm going to leave that as best I can. And I'm just quickly going to fill that in. And then we've got a line coming down to his tear duct. That's quite a dark shadow. And then the same, the fold in the corner comes down. And then we've got this crease going up towards his eyebrow, right in the corner. Now, I'm using the side of the pencil just to fill in where we put these shapes quickly. And I'm filling in the shape of his eyebrow where that dark is. And then it comes right over. And there you've got an eye already starting to give you some good shape and form. But we want the outline pretty quickly. But again, I'm just putting the eye in because that gives you a really good strong focal point. I'm going to do the other side and then we'll put the rest of the outline in all around his face and his head. So we've got, we need to bring that down right to the center line and now I'm going to bring that down a little bit more There you've got one eye in. Now we're going to do this second eye and the eyes are great because you've got these dark shadows. So now this eye goes right through the center line. And we've got this brilliant shape. And it's really, really dark and thick at the top of his eyebrow. Not his eyebrow, the top of his eyelid. And then just to the side of your grid line, we've got his eye coming round, and that's all pretty dark. Now, when I was colouring that in, I did actually colour over the bit that I was trying to leave. But that's okay. So now we've got this straight line coming up. Just going to correct this a little bit, just using my putty rubber. I'm actually going to try and pull out. There we go, a little bit of that highlight. So now we've got the line of his nose, and it's just on the inside there. And then the dark of his eyebrow goes right the way up. And it's not a straight line, so you've got this kind of W shape here. So here you can see you've got a curve coming round, and then another one, and then there's a slight third one there. And if we Shade that in quickly. There we've got really nice solid form giving you a focal point on the drawing. So 
again I'm just I'm gonna actually use Moore's plastic eraser <laughs> so just push the line over it that little bit too much but that's okay and that's the reason why you put your construction lines in so now we're going to bring the bridge of his nose down there's just a slight curve and that's coming down here to where we did the triangle for his nose and then we want to follow this curve so here the curve of the nose you can see you've got this kind of D shape again it's where the nose comes around so it's down from this part of the shadow in his eye socket on his left eye and you come down and you've got that shadow there and you can see how there's a D that comes around and makes a form and shape there that you can actually use as your reference points and now his left nostril curves over and then his nose the center part of his nose comes under right down there and then you've got the dark and we'll darken that down a lot more in a little bit so now we've got the edge of his lip coming off and that's just fuzzy on the side because of his whiskers we want the side of his face of his cheek that's just coming up there now we've got the bag under his eye and then his cheek comes down and then curves across and it's going to come down and join there so you want that line to come across so as it lines up with the little line that you've got just above his upper lip again eyebrow now this curve this part of his forehead that goes up it's not just a straight line it's just slightly curved and that goes up to where this hair is so now we've got this line here which is the shadow underneath but we're now just going to indicate his hair rather quickly all the way over because this is really good quick outline so now I'm resting my arm on my my wrist on my right arm so I can just be a lot freer with the lines that are coming down and over and again remember with the hair go in the direction of the hair as if you're brushing it and that will really help you to make the hair look a lot more natural so we've got that great flick at the back that curves around so now we want a bit more definition as this comes down the back of his head we follow this line down now I'm using the curve I'm left-handed so obviously this way the curve works for me but again I'm not resting my hand on the paper so you're getting a more natural curve and then that comes down hits the center line just kind of kinks and wobbles and then you've got that little square bit and then it goes back up behind his ear so from the crown at the back of his head You've got the hair, the parting coming down, curving round. And you've got the 
edge of his hair there, coming down into this dark part, and like a sideburn that then goes up over the top of his ear. So now we want the curve of his ear. Remember, his ear is inside this rectangle, but you've just got these shapes that are working for you. So you've got the top. It's just a really nice curve that's going to go up and then come back down over to this point. And then you're just going to come down and follow the lines inside the lines, the construction lines that you've already put to come down curve underneath and again you can put some little markers that you can use as kind of dot to dot really and it just helps you and guides you so you've got the center line you can see it kind of curves up and then comes back down so now I'm just going to follow that curve and I'm looking at my reference his ear comes over got a little kind of point on the edge comes over a little bit it's not a straight curve and then his ear comes down curves on the way down kinks through and then comes down to the lower ear lobe and then that curves and you've got that shadow underneath Now we're just going to follow this line around inside his ear from the top and we want to follow the curve coming up round and then it comes kind of straight down and then just curves in this little bit there going to indicate the shapes a little bit more where that shading is and then we've got this D section I'm not going to draw a solid line because it's like just shading just with soft edges so leaving that like that now here we've got it comes up the edge of his ear we need to get that shape so it's like the back of this D here so I'm just keep looking and checking before I draw my line And here we go. So just draw that line down and then we can curve up bottom part of that ear, the inner part of his ear going up there. Now we need to just increase that inside of his ear. Now we can just work on and indicate a little bit more some parts of his beard that are coming down. And really we've got the shape of the back of his neck and his jacket. So we've got this triangle here where we've got the bottom part of his beard that goes down onto Ollie's neck and that gives us that shape but it's the coat that comes down and the shape of that is going to kind of frame the bottom part of Ollie's jaw so we just detail up the neck And we 
here we can see this was too low it's a it's level with the top of the back of his jacket is level with the bottom of his nose so I'm just gonna increase that line up there just curve that around and now the jacket comes down This is going to come down and then we've got this kind of point here. It's kind of level with where it crosses this guideline, level with the edge of Ollie's, the side of his sideburn at the top by his ear. So we can just bring that line down. And then the jacket just comes around. curves up to a little point but it's all in the kind of dark down here underneath and then we want this one this point so you kind of come down and you've just got a little kind of rectangle and then that curves round underneath We've just got like these kind of couple of little highlights but we can just let them disappear out into the shadow we don't have to accentuate them because we're doing the drawing we're focusing on the face and so like i say this part of the jacket is just coming up over the bottom of his chin line so now we want, we're going to put all these lips in. So here we've got the corner of his lip and that kind of is level with the edge of his eye. And we've got the diagonal line that we put in on this like, little triangle so we can just curve that and we've got a slight curve to the part of his bottom lip there and that curves down and then we've got on his chin just the whiskers coming off just indicates some fuzzy lines and his jaw comes down to about there and like right in the dark so we can just bring the edge of his collar solid and then there's another little inside bit of the collar inside underneath his chin now back up to his mouth we've got this fantastic lovely dark shape under his bottom lip little curve on the top so we've got this like kind of rectangle shape here solid line at the crease underneath and that's going to all be shadow but then we've got here we've got his lip his top lip so we've got an M so you can see here where you've got the crease in between his nose so you've got a point up and that, that's like a kind of M so that goes up and then it goes off so you can see there you've got that little M shape and then that goes off towards the corner of his mouth so the actual corner of his mouth is there so I'm just going to 
slightly erase that, but we have got a lot of shadow above. So the edge of his mouth is there and then it just kinks down that little bit. And then we've got the end of his moustache and then the top part of his moustache goes right up to his underneath his nostril and then we've got this lovely shadow that comes down a shape in the crease in between the center part of his top lip just indicate that and then the edge of the side of his moustache now we want the bottom part of his beard that comes off so that comes down and then we can nicely indicate his beard coming down just put some little black marks in on the end of his chin and then we've got this shape that's coming up so you've got this V here that we kind of indicated in that goes up and so I'm just going to indicate some flex where the beard is and where it comes down and then you've got the top so this curves across just slightly comes down there's a little rectangle a flex of whiskers going up there another little one there because we've got this diagonal of shade on his cheek caused by the top of his cheekbone and then that goes all the way up but we've got this fantastic dark patch it's right underneath and so quite likely we've got the crease I'm just increasing the shapes we've got like the shadow shape that comes down the side of his nose here right the way down and there's a crease line right in between the center of his forehead and off where the bottom of his hair is we've got some crease lines on his forehead just to indicate those in and we've got another one across the center and one across the top just move the paper out of the way and we've got a shoulder that comes down and like I say we've got the collar and the shadow that's underneath but there we have an outline of Ollie put down ready to be detailed up so I hope you've enjoyed that just getting that outline down now we're going to erase the grid lines out and then ooh, just found my eraser just clean the end off and so now i'm just going to get rid of a lot of the grid lines that we actually put in Oop. and you can see how that becomes quite dirty so you have to keep on cleaning just cleaning it off Again, I, I generally just wipe it on my jeans, but I do actually have a, a towel, just a, a thick cotton towel as well that I use. But denim jeans are, tend to be quite good as well. 
you can see how it just picks up the pencil and then smudges your paper but I quite like those smudges they're a little bit kind of arty which is nice so I'm using the same this is a Mars plastic but kind of in a pen it just means I can get into the detail areas and not obliterate a lot of the construction the actual drawing construction lines not just the grid that's on the paper now again this is great for that like, down here down in the ear and in the top of the technical pens that they do like here it's really really close I'll just show you so this is the technical pen that you get and they come with a little a tiny little eraser in the top and you can get replacements for them but they are good for even closer little detail because you can really get into tight little areas with that and rub those lines out that you want to not have in your drawing so again we've now got lots of bits of rubber eraser on the actual drawing so I'm just brushing those off rather than using my hand or a kitchen towel because that could actually make it very dirty so there is a good full outline just some of the lines that I've rubbed out just put him back in of Ollie Ollyton's face I'm just going to sharpen my pencil now we are going to whack in a load of tone so we need to get we've got like you see the light that's coming down but what we need to do is lightly cover all of the flesh now so I'm just quickly filling in just using the side of my pencil all over Ollie's face and any of the kind of highlights on his forehead and down the bridge of his nose we'll just pull them off with the putty rubber at the end so I'm just filling in all over just with a good mid-tone well quite a light tone anyway not even it's not really a mid-tone we're just going to put a simple light tone in now I'm just going to add in some dark so where we put in markers in our construction lines I'm now just increasing some of the tone coming down so this is coming down that caused by the hair so this is going to be all dark presently I'm still using the 2b pencil we'll be into the 4b soon now we want tone underneath his eye underneath this eye top of his eyebrow increase a bit coming down his nose and then we want coming down by his sideburn and the side of his cheek and then coming off to this pocket of shadow caused by his left cheekbone and we can just increase that a little bit more right down the back of the neck 
you can see how very quickly we've actually just filled in a lot of area again underneath his bottom lip round on his chin so now we really want to fill in the shade in his ear this crease coming down then the top of his ear inside just these nice shapes that are created by the folds of skin inside his ear and we can darken them down as we go along again I'm not resting my hand on the paper I'm just kind of bridging it on my right hand just so as I've, I'm using the length of my arm to just fill this in and it's just quicker and again just enjoy this and if you're just not confident yet get a sheet of paper you know whatever size and just do, do this just shade large areas in creating you know try it with a 2b try it with a hp try it with a 4b and a 2a and just create and shade all these different shades that you can create with the different grades of pencil and there is a uh, I do at the beginning of how to draw a zombie uh, there's a 20 minute section describing what the pencils that I use but I've actually separated that off and put an individual vid video up and that is in the how to draw anything playlist about just a basics overview of the different grades and what you can do with them and how you can use and utilize them. So there we have a lot of shade down. So again, I'm now getting the kitchen roll that I've used on the previous drawings, just folding it to a clean piece. And now I'm just pushing the pencil around. in the direction and the shapes that I want. So down the side of his nose, this lovely pocket of shade there on his cheek. And that curves around and up, right down the back of his neck. Over it, just softening gently. Again, I'm now going to just fold it and get a slightly better point. To do the same on the ear. And there we've just got some really nice tone very quickly down just by pushing it around using a piece of kitchen roll so now we're going to come back in we need to detail up all these eyes So here we've got this much darker. I'm still using the 2B just to create, but then we're going to go back over with a 4B. So here we've got the fold of his upper eyelid. We've got a little patch of dark right in the corner there. And then you've got the crease lines coming out. And there's one coming right the way off and we want to increase the shadow on his eyeball and then this dark fold going right up into the corner 
and again his eyebrow. I want to we've got that diagonal shape there that kind of goes up. We've got no like real good definition, it's just a good solid shape. So but I'm still going in the kind of direction that the eyebrows would be. And so I'm just pushing the shade created by underneath his eyebrow, the top part of his eye socket. And we've got this kind of little point there. So that goes up and you've got that little point of the shadow. And then you've got these kind of little creases where it just comes up and you've got some shadow going up there. Crease right in the corner. And then we can just darken down the shade. Now, right in the corner of his eye, got this dark part that comes down to the bag underneath of his lower eye eyelid. And so we can really increase the shadow there. So straight away you can see that that eye is really starting to lift off and just start to really lift off the page for us which is great and we've got this kind of nice square here of shade right in the corner that then just starts to peter down coming down underneath his eye again and again we've got more shade coming out on the creases underneath his eye Coming up the side of his forehead. So now if we just bring some of that little shade, just a little bit of cross hatching across the bridge of the top of the bridge of his nose between his two eyebrows, and then we've got the dark of his eyebrow on this side. we can just increase the intensity of that. And again, I'm still using the 2B pencil. Such a versatile tool. So now, really want the dark. We've got this corner and we've got his eye really dark on his right eye which is just so lovely just a great dark shape and then the shade of his eyebrow comes a little bit further over I'm just going to sharpen my pencil and you got his lower eyelid that comes around and then that's going to be highlighted that's the kind of top ridge of his lower eyelid and then the fold of the bag under his right eye Increasing the shadow down the side of his nose a little bit. There already you can really see the intensity of Ollie's gaze. And apparently this is his sympathetic face, so <laughs> which is quite lovely. And uh, but it's just great actually having that wonderful stare just makes a brilliant subject to draw. So now, again, I'm going to increase the shadow of his nostril. We've got the dark 
coming right round from underneath his nostril and then the curve of his nose underneath is very dark too in right to the edge and then we can really increase that shadow right underneath the bottom part of his nostril now the crease over the side of his nose right into the corner And there's a little bit of shade just kind of coming up the front center of his nose there now again we're now going to put in the dark of his bottom well the his top lip underneath the bottom of his mustache so we've got that kind of angles we've got where his actual lip is but it goes up and then here where we've got this like top part of this M it creases down and the dark goes up just curves a little bit and then you get that curve of his bottom lip and you kind of got a V of dark there so if we fill that in of his lip and the same nice dark tone for the top lip going all the way across and then that centre part going up underneath his nose right into the centre we've got like a really good amount of dark right underneath and so now I'm going to fill in but I'm going in the kind of direction that his moustache above his top lip is going to grow in. I'm just filling in very quickly all of that shape that we kind of put in. And then I'm just turning the pencil using the sharper point to indicate whiskers. Where we need them to be darker down here. I'm just pressing on that a little bit harder. And then lighter above as that curves up and we need to increase the dark again right under the nostril just put some flex in of little little whiskers and then on the right part of his lip just indicating now I'm going to pull in quickly because there's a lot of dark from the construction lines just going to pull off some of the pencil there so that I've got that highlight and even here we've got some of the construction lines so I'm just going to pull them off and that very 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 dark line on the edge I'm just going to soften that up so that we get the edge of his moustache now I'm just filling in that tone because we don't want it to be a super highlight across his moustache but again I just pulled that in a little bit too much so just pull that light up and there you can see all his moustache giving his face a lot more form straight away so now we've got this wonderful shade underneath again remember I'm just using the 2B pencil we're just trying to fill in a lot of the tone quickly so now I'm using the edge of the pencil following the shapes Again, we've got the whiskers underneath his bottom lip just slightly we've got some you've got here like a C shape on the edge of this shadow where this comes down 
and then you've got some really nice strong dark whiskers so I'm just dabbing some points on there and then indicating again just a couple of whiskers underneath and then we've got this little rectangle of shadow that comes over to the side Oops, sorry, just flinging my pencil. So now we're coming down into the beard. And I'm just gonna fill in quickly where all the dark is. We've got a darker tone coming up the side of his chin, his jaw, sorry, up to the corner of his ear. Got a nice shadow underneath his ear. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil again. I really do love that electric sharpener. You're going to hear me repeat that phrase so many times. It's fantastic. The amount of hours I must have spent sharpening a pencil. Phenomenal. It's just absolutely wonderful. So now, right down the bottom of his chin. Just pressing on a little bit darker where I'm going to go back over that with a 4B down here. So now I'm using the tip because I just want to indicate a large amount of, and I'm just twisting the pencil after a couple of marks, just to indicate the whiskers as we're just going up. Again, I've said before in, in numerous uh, videos that if you want to do hyper-realistic art, in fact, one that I've just seen uh, by a gentleman named Calvin Okafor, who is a wonderful graphite pencil and charcoal artist, uh, hyper-real. He did a portrait of Prince. Phenomenal. I think it takes him like six to eight weeks to do a drawing. That's full-time hours, maybe with overtime as well. I don't know exactly how he clocks on. But it's not done in an hour and a half. You want to do it ultra detailed, you have got to put the hours in. And uh, Calvin and many others are phenomenal with what they do. Uh, so do check those guys out if you want to. But you just got to put the hours in. And all I'm doing is basically showing you the techniques that you need. And then you just got to put the practice in and put the hours in. But a six week long tutorial would be... Yes, quite time consuming, shall we say. And uh, But that's why I like doing this. I like giving you guys and girls the techniques and the tips and the hints to demystify drawing so that you can create a portrait really, really quickly. And then you can go and do your own and, and learn and develop your skills. And if you want to do mega detail, you can. So I hope that this is enjoyable because I just love sharing with you. Again, this is the second of the DS from SAS, Who Dares Wins. And uh, so, right there, I just need to pull off a little bit of tone. And we are gonna do all five of them. And it's just great to show you what you can do quickly with a pencil. That's looking rather splendid. So now I'm going to come up and we're going to do his ear. Putting the dark shadow right in at the top where that curves around. And we've got a much darker tone right at the top. 
and I'm using the paper and I'm also resting my hand it just gives me the flexibility to put good detail in but also be soft at the same time so I'm not getting crisp edges so here you've got this dark shadow at the bottom and then it just kind of lightens up as it goes a little bit wider going up and the same in this here at the top and then we've got this very dark like we've got the dark at the top of his ear here but it just softens out we've got a slightly sharper edge on the top here where we've got this lighter tone and this is this D that we drew earlier to create the shape in the inside of Ollie's left ear so now I'm bringing the darker tone down and then we've got this dark line right next to the edge of his ear like the entry part of his ear lobe into his kind of ear canal and then this bottom part okay, I've got a little dark patch some tone just filling it in just keep looking at the reference and here you've got some light dark tone coming over across the top of this lighter and we'll just pull some highlights off in a bit but we'll do all that using the putty rubber the edge of his ear and that comes down and then you've got a kind of a crease by the edge of his ear that comes around there And then we've got darker shade caused where his ear comes down right next to his hair again right underneath the back of his ear slightly darker to the back of his hair and then we've got a nice darker patch on the back of his earlobe So there we can see we've got a lot of great shape and tone just again down on his face before we've put all the rest of the darks in and when we put those on in a moment it will give us a lot more clarity on what we need to do to finish off with the toning and shading so I'm just darkening a little bit so you can see there off the bottom part coming underneath his eye over to his cheek we've got a little bit more shading going down there Again, just like these into the creases on the side of his head now again I'm just going to come back in quickly with the kitchen roll just to push that tone around a little bit and it just softens it I just I just like the effect you, you get to see the pencil still but it's just slightly softened And you can use your finger but obviously it gets your finger very dirty very quickly now that's looking pretty good I, say, I hope you like that so far just that little bit of outline uh, oh sorry shading all in and now we need to get the rest of the dark in to build up the drawing and then we can finish it off with the final tones and highlights now I'm just going to sharpen my 4B pencil and we're now going to
crack on and fill in all of this hair. So now I'm going to fill in the darker parts. Now I am holding, I need my paper again. I'm holding the paper firm, even though it's taped down because I'm really pressing. I love pressing on hard with these pencils. I love the kind of burnished, dark, glossy lines that are created by pushing on. Again, I'm using the 4B pencil for this. B is for black and the B range is softer. So they go down and blunt off a lot quicker. I'm carefully going around his ear. I'm not resting my hand on the paper at all. I'm just balancing, holding my arm from the shoulder point as carefully as I can, but not resting my hand down on the paper so I don't smudge it with my palm of my hand or the side of my palm. So here we have coming down the back of Ollie's head. And I've got all of this darker shadow and his hair at the back going up. So now I'm resting on the top of my arm because I want to be very careful over the top of his ear. So this comes down and then we can now fill that in really quickly. So now we've got the dark in his parting going to the crown the rear of his head. You can see I'm just twisting and pushing the pencil in the same direction as his hair. Again, just draw hair as if you are brushing it, either with a brush or a comb, and it just ends up being more realistic. Yeah, so I've got the diagonal lines that I do being left-handed. If you're right-handed, then they'll go the opposite direction. But when it comes to hair, just draw in the direction of the hair. So you can see I've left the kind of highlights going up. Just let some of the white paper showing through. Now I'm twisting the pencil. To bring up dark now it's not full highlights so there you can see we've just left enough to indicate oh need to sharpen a pencil so all of that the entire the point just disappeared on that part But we've left enough of the paper to show the kind of highlights going up over the top of Ollie's head there. The hair curving round the back. So now we want, we've got the shadow coming down. And this is completely dark. And that curves around and then goes up. And the shadow comes down. And then pushes up to where his parting goes on the left hand side.
so now we want this shadow coming off just gradually relieving the pressure so as we can graduate the tone caused by his hair coming down over the front of his forehead but we gotta have that slightly softer edge coming all the way down so we've got that lovely dark shape so now on the front we've got light a dark part but we're leaving this lighter part open a couple of dark parts but from the parting at the back we can really just push over some dark lines created by his hair as it's just brushed over at the back just coming off and now we need a little higher that one there so now you can see these are just curving up so we've got horizontal lines coming over from the top here again I'm just leaving some of the lighter parts and then curves up so I'm literally just flicking the pencil up as it comes around imagining that I'm you know, brushing the hair and that gives us all of that tone and shape that we actually need but by using the lines and the marks that we're making to create the impression of the hairstyle that we're trying to recreate in graphite pencil so now we've got right down the tips need to sharpen the pencil again so now we've got this Bing, the edge just plinged off right at the, the sharp point because it was sharp and just just exploded off uh, just the very fine tip of the point now and quickly bring this dark line down And then we've got the dark of the collar coming off here. Just filling this in really quickly. Again, this is the joy of doing a rougher, a looser sketch, as you can just be really nice and impressionistic. So I've got a dark patch there, and it curves out again. We've got a shadow and a shadow part there. And then it's all dark, kind of coming right the way down. And then we've got this. Kind of, whether it's like a clasp around the collar or it's off the top of the zip. But I'm now really filling in quickly just leaving a little bit of lighter tone on the edge just filling that area in so quick I mean you can see the paper shaking that's because I'm pressing on so hard get the dark in. Now again you can use 
an 8B or a 6B or some makes you even get a 9B. That's, I think a 9B pencil, it's the artistic, it's the graphite pencil equivalent of turning your rock amplifier up to 11. And uh, that's the kind of standard quote, you know, does it go up to 11? From a seminal spoof rockumentary film from many years ago, which off the top of my head right now, I can't remember. It'll come to me and I'll go, aha, in a moment. That's a thing with age. You keep forgetting stuff. Quite a lot of stuff, it seems. But there, you can see we've now got that dark in, which is fantastic, but we need to increase the dark shape as well. Underneath his chin and his jaw going up. So now I'm going to very quickly just whack in some tone coming down across his jacket and his right shoulder. We've got these crease lines coming down. That's the joy we can create this wonderful impression of the fabric and the folds with a pencil very very quickly and you can just really feel the pencil pressing into the paper and just enjoy making the marks. So there, we've got a lot more of the tone down and we've actually filled a lot of the paper in. Shot open the pencil again. And we're just increasing the dark using the 4B to give us that much more intense dark colour. So again, I've just increased the dark around his nostril but then I'm using it softly to blur the edge and again is the shade under his top lip we can increase that and then there's a really intense dark in this fold underneath his chin And then we really need to increase the dark in his eyes and all around the shading around his eyes. So I'm just quickly going over this and then we'll increase it even more in a moment because I'm going to soften off what we've done again using the kitchen roll. So we've got this dark here now, and right in the corner of by the nose, dark coming around under his eye, his top eyelid, his eye, iris, and pupil, and right in that corner. When we start pulling up some of the highlights, that'll really help 
to intensify the dark but already you can see his eyes are really having a lot of form and tone and shape because we've added the dark in now a little bit so now I'm going to just push in the hair that tone around and the same thing down on the jacket And that's looking pretty good we're nearly there now we are going to pull out some highlights so here we've got I'm just going to start pulling some up on Holly's nose down the bridge of his nose underneath the bag on his eye then we've got this the top of his eyelid and then just dabbing underneath the bottom of his eye at the top so I say you got the top of that eyelid the lower eyelid And then this crease line coming off the side of his eye, that kind of upper eyelid, and then the top of this cheek. Coming down the side of his face. And again, I'm just dabbing, I just keep folding the putty rubber just dabbing and you can see you're getting that three-dimensional effect just by pulling off a little bit of the pencil so here now above the top of his eye left eye the lines in his forehead coming right the way up to this top part straight away we've got more shape and form because we're changing the tone we're actually bringing out some highlights so now again just over this his right eye going right the way up his forehead and we've got a couple of little crease lines in there now right in the corner of this eye we've got a couple of little bits and that just really helps to lift it up some real little flex right inside and then just right in that shadow right in going up into the crease between where the corner of his eye is going right up to underneath his eyebrow So now on this side we've got a strong highlight right on the edge and the same thing on the upper part of his lower eyelid is clean and open and then cheek reflected highlights a little bit there's a little bit of a highlight just in the corner of his eye there which you can just indicate and it's a bit sharper on this side and that's just given us a lot more texture into Ollie's skin just by using the putty rubber to bring that about 
Again, the same thing on the shape of his nose here on the side of his nostril. And going up and underneath. And then by the side of his moustache. And then even in between the hairs here, we can just dapple out some highlights. And then the highlights on the top part of his bottom lip. And then as that creases and comes down slightly, again the same underneath this dark shadow, we've got a really nice strong part there. Now I'm just dappling with a point just the highlights on his whiskers that are coming down, just pulling some of the actual tone off. Again, the same in the shadow underneath his top lip, bottom lip, sorry. Right on the edge, this top lip, where you've got that M. Now that's really lifted it up. Now we can do the same on the top of his ear. This part there on the corner of his ear. Coming down onto his earlobe at the bottom. And there straight away his ears just got so much more three-dimensionality to it. Again, I'm just pulling off some more of the pencil, just dappling carefully. Now we've got the back of his neck. We've got some creases in the actual skin coming off underneath his jaw just pushing that with my finger back in that's really given us a lot more detail and form so now we can come back in with a pencil and here you can see I actually whacked the pencil as I was drawing some lines in on the hair but that's okay we can just cover that up in a moment so again right on the top where we push that pencil around with the kitchen roll I'm now just putting some highlights in just again same direction as the hair just indicating some highlights and it'll just pull a little bit off and give you a little bit more shape and form in the actual hair. Same on the highlights in this darker area, just slightly indicating the darker shapes. So now we really are close to the end now. So I'm coming back in now with the 4B pencil. darkening the shades down right in his eye into the corner I'm just softening the edges as, as I go around and we need real dark there as, it, as his eye comes under you've got the shadow cast so we can 
increase. Now again, I'm using the 4B for the absolute dark parts. And we'll come back in with the 2B momentarily. So again, now down. Just twisting the pencil, putting some really dark whiskers in. Dark on his lip. And then that shadow underneath his bottom lip. Just some whiskers and then the real dark at the bottom. So now we want to quickly indicate some darker whiskers from this deep shadow. Oops! Yeah. That really fired off. I'm pressing on really, really hard then. And the angle had just snapped the graphite clean off. And another piece is just gone. Now, part of that is because I'm rushing. I'm going really quickly to try and you know, get this done for you so as you can really see. And, and another reason is it's because it's just, it's just exciting to do. I need a sharp point. I'm going to need the extender for this soon. So now I want dark in his ear. But I'm softening where that comes off. I got the real dark in the top of his ear. Increasing that shadow as it comes down. I'm using the side of the pencil so that I can get a really nice soft tone. Shadow caused by his ear. Lines in his neck, round the back. Again, lots of just little squiggles to indicate his bristles. So now I'm just quickly indicating some darker hair again and this is just going over and around to just tighten up certain areas but also increase the shading so again I'm feeding the shade off from where his hair meets his skin so here we've got hair that comes down out of that parting and we can increase that shadow a little bit as that comes off the top and around the back and that gives us more shadow here Build that up as it comes down. The front of his hair. Again, just following the direction of his hair. So here now at the front, we've got a little bit of darker going on. We've 
got really nice dark detail where it comes down right on the tips and that shadow underneath comes down and you can increase the crease lines in his forehead and that's looking pretty good so now I'm going to quickly come back in with the 2B pencil and I'm just going to sharpen that so I've got a really good sharp point Just increasing the tones and the shadows just to make the shape stand out a little bit more. So here going up forehead then we've got the shadow caused by his hair just coming down that little bit more again and his creases that come across just pushing the shadow with my finger and now we've got shadow caused on the side of his head like going up the, to the side and coming down to his cheek and then we've really got this lovely dark socket caused by his cheekbone within it we've got this fantastic mole you can just indicate a few of the other moles and freckles there's like three there and then you got more of the shadow coming down to there and then coming off and that's just great shape and form. Again, I'm just pushing this with my finger now, just because it's quicker. And don't be afraid to use your fingers. It is messy, but it's one of the joys of drawing. That you can just be creative very very quickly and it's very hands-on so now I'm just increasing some of his whiskers at the bottom onto his chin so here we've got some more whiskers up a little bit and then we've got a few hairs that come down that goes off and up the same there increase that bit under his ear and then some whiskers going up there the shadow underneath his left eye going up into his nose and then that's his cheek socket coming down 
Again, that's looking pretty good. Just putting on some highlights again. Just coming back in. So where's the pencil gone? I have literally thrown my pencil somewhere. I'll get another 2B because uh, I just want to increase the shadow in between his nose there his eyebrows on the top of his nose but that is pretty much Portrait Holly. You can see this shadow increasing, and you just need to make that really stand out nicely. Anyway, I hope you're happy with that I've certainly enjoyed doing it I hope you've had fun and now we just need to put the signature on and there we have the full portrait of Ollie Ollerton from SAS Who Dares Wins I hope you've enjoyed doing that I've had a really good time drawing that one. Next one will be Mark Billingham. And I'll see you in the next drawing. Please do like and subscribe uh, for all the new how to draw videos. There's going to be lots of subjects. And that's been great fun. I hope you've had a great time going along with that. And enjoy your drawing. Ta-da.